Hello, Just Jacks here and welcome to my channel. Third and final part of the Salt Dough Trilogy. A lot of mixed success slash not quite success along the way. Part one, making salt dough and rolling out flat cookie cutter style. We needed to add more water to the mix. We also needed to lower the temperature of the oven to stop it, in attempt anyway, to stop it from rising. I since had done part two with some little sculptures. They have had mixed success once more. And part three of the Salt Dough Trilogy is seeing what happens if we mix food colouring. So that's why I've got some gloves because this is going to get messy. So I'm going to cut this final section into three, four rather. So we got a bit saved for trial and error, or maybe five, no, four. Actually, we'll save that little bit for trial and error. So I'm going to do them one piece at a time. We'll start out with that piece. And I'm going to keep them in the bag because this stuff, as I found out when I was doing this the other day with the little sculptures, dries out really quickly. I also need, if I can get it, a drop of water but not too much because I think that's where some of the sculptures went wrong because the ones that I did not add any additional water to did not rupture the ones that I did add additional water to were the ones that ruptured pretty much where the water was so I'm thinking that was the reason for it now, we'll start out with yellow. So I'm just going to put a little drop in there. And I'm going to try, in fact, I'll cut each piece in half. I'm going to try marble and outright dye. So with the marble, this is where I've got excess of cocktail sticks. I'm just going to put a few drops down. I'm not going to mix it in completely. Let's see how that works. So I'm not going to mix it completely. I'm just going to mix it enough for some colour to run through. Let's try adding a tiny bit more. So I've got to be careful of the wet aspect because that seems to make quite a difference and by adding food colouring I am adding moisture so let's I think there's going to be a fine balance to this right so I'm not going to do anything else to this one I'm just going to let whatever comes of that comes of that so there's some subtle marbling going on so I'm going to stick this one back in the bag. We're going to do all of our mixing now. And then we'll decide on what we're going to do. So we'll stick you right up there. Right, this one, I'm going to try and just, just drop. Oops, there's um, a bit more than a drop there. <laughs> so let's be prepared for that, yes. Oh, and that. Well, it's a good thing I'm wearing black. Right, this is going to be really yellow, and it's probably going to need quite a bit of drying out because I put way too much in there. But I'm hoping as I need it, the salt's going to combat. And this is also why I got so many gloves ready. So I knew there was going to be quite a mess. So I might leave that one out to just dry up a little bit. So let's just swap gloves. So let's get... We'll get the little bit for the red. So... Marbling first. Don't 
right, that's a bit more obvious than the yellow. The yellow probably did go further than it looked. Maybe we'll do what we did to keep it fair. We'll add a tiny couple of drops more. And then no further messing with that one. Now this little piece we're going to try and colour and we're not going to put as much in as we did with the yellow. Let's just go with lots and lots and lots of dots. See if we can get away with making it a little bit more red than that. It's nowhere near as sticky as the yellow because I didn't douse it in red dye, but it is still quite sticky. So again, we can probably get away with letting that sit out. Now let's try the blue. Oddly enough, it seems that the red and the yellow are much stronger than the blue. Plus, not a lot of blue seems to be coming out on the stick. So again, minimal mixing. We'll stick that one also in the bag. That one can mop up that. And I think we'll be brave. Anyone who happens to be a salt dough expert out there, you'll either be singing my praises right now or going, what is she doing? You don't mix food dye. You've made it too wet. There could be any number of things that I'm doing wrong, but that's why we're experimenting. And like I said, I haven't played with salt dough for a very long time and I've never mixed food colouring with it. So I was curious. Right, that is the weakest blue I have ever seen. But I daren't put any more in there because it just doesn't seem to be dying. I mean, it's not as sticky as the yellow, so we could probably get away with putting a bit more in there. We'll try one last, and I thought I put too much in there, but perhaps I didn't. Maybe I did this time though. And it hasn't really gone that much more blue. This is a little bit bluer. Right, let's see what we can do with what we got. The yellow marble. Let's roll it out and see how it looks. Not very marbly. Oh, there's a little bit more marble in this side. Well, let's do a couple of things. We'll do a couple of flat bits. That's considerably more marbled, or at least more obvious that it's marbled. Well, actually, the blue's not too bad, to be fair to it. The blue and the red have marbled pretty well. I wonder how they'll come out in the oven. So a couple of simple things that are going to be flat that we can do with these. Well, let's get a little outright yellow. And then we'll put the blue in the red and the red in the yellow. Roll them just enough for them to become one. Right, I'm going to put those as flat ones in the oven. We can let them sit there for a second. Let's see if we can do a mini sculpture. Right. A little teddy. with minimal detail and no water 
<laughs> he's a bit <laughs> he's a bit funny looking. Let's try making a little picture. We've got a tiny little landscape there. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what comes of that. Let's try again doing what I tried to do before, but with more than one layer. So I was trying to get the petals to curl up and around, but they just sort of, they just sort of didn't. It's um, a bit of a butt looking kind of flower. I did put these in and have a result of such with a sculpture. So let's try that actually as well. We use a little tiny, if we can. Okay, so we've got a little very colourful flower. We'll see how that works. And there might be a round two of all of this. That's what we'll do. We'll have some thinking time while I get this little batch in the oven. Right, our food colouring experiment pieces are baked and not very flat and sort of mixed results the little teddy has come out really cool i'll have to get a close-up on him towards the end because we kept it simple just one color for the body red for the ears and the muzzle and blue for the eyes and nose so that's worked because it's all nice and clean the stuff that we tried to make green with the little landscape here, you can just about see the sun. Like I say, we'll get in close. The green grass has not gone green. It's gone, in fact, quite white. Same for the leaves. But the tree has stayed red, well, pink. Our marbled bits, you can subtly see a bit of yellow here and there. You can see a little bit more of the blue going on here and the red just sort of went into everything and went rather grainy. I think it just took, um, it's a little bit more marbled at the back, but it's really heavy marbled. It looks like a bad paint job. The flower has come out pretty good. You can't really see that there's different colors in amongst everything. You can see a little bit of blue breaking through on the second to last layer. You can see a little bit of yellow erupting on the very back and you can see we've got some nice vein work coming through with the red though so what we're going to do this and this are simply going to be sealed with the pva glue these ones i think we'll have a further experiment with i'm going to try and add some permanent marker see how that takes i've also got some gold and silver acrylic pens and I've got the food dye out as well. So I might try and food dye the sky blue again. So let's do that one first. I'm not going to add any more than this because a little bit's gone a long way. I don't know what to do about the grass yet. I don't know whether to try, well I can't do anything else to it right now anyway because if I add any more food colour into that it's all just going to So we'll pop that over there for a second. Now these, let's see how a marker takes this because these have got some vaguely yellow splodges in there. So let's, keeping it simple, we'll just turn them all into smiley faces. Well, the marker does take well. Over here, I'm going to see if I can turn this into an apple tree with some funky apples. So I've got brown. The permanent marker goes on this really well. Now, this one... <laughs> There's some blue. I 
don't know what we can do with this guy. It's a bit of a weird sort of robot. That's what I'm seeing. Right. <laughs> We've got some odd little things here. In fact, I don't think you can really you see a bit of what's going on there. We will go close up at the end. Right. I think we'll make this a combo and we'll put, since the green took really well, we'll just not do the whole thing. Reinsinuate that that is meant to be leaves and grass. Let's sun out a little bit. Right. We are just going to we as in you and I in case you're doing it at the same time. I'm just gonna seal all of these. I'll let them though I think this one will be fine because that's not having fun. I'm gonna let that one dry. I'm gonna let that one dry and all of these I'm just going to seal. But we're going to flash forward for that bit because that's just putting PVA glue on there. Um, quite thick because you can. And really quickly, I'll do one. Some of you, if you've seen part one and part two, you'd have seen plenty of glue go down already. In case you haven't, you do have to work quick because it dries from the underside up as the clay absorbs the moisture. And if you don't work quick enough and you go back over somewhere that you've already been, you can pull the glue up and end up with a less than smooth finish. It ends up all knobbly. Also be interesting to see if giving this a seal will bring any of the colour from the marble or the attempt at marbling forwards. So there we are as quick as we can go. So we don't pull it all back off again. So that's what I'm going to do to everything. Seal it. This is officially the end of the Salt Dough Saga. The Salt Dough Trilogy. We had making Salt Dough and Cookie Cutters. Then we had Sculpting Salt Dough. Now we got Food Dyed Salt Dough. So let's get the phone up and we'll recap as we're having a close up. So <laughs> now we've had some mixed results. Let's pop the sculpting bits aside for a second. So this, actually it was in this order I think. So this was meant to have, you can't see really anything on the back there. You can't really see anything on the front. This was meant to have a subtle yellow marbling, but it doesn't seem to have any yellow marbling. <laughs> so the yellow we need to be a lot more stronger with. Um, as for the marker, the marker took really well. Well, the coloured markers did. We got a little bit of seeping out here. So I'll try not to say the word that is the correct word because YouTube doesn't like it. Which is really frustrating in the art world because some words are what they are. So YouTube to you, get your head around words, they're just words. So yeah, these are funky looking apples. This one looks like a strawberry, this one looks like a bean. I don't know what that one looks like. That one could probably get away with being an apple. But yeah, we'll know future that Markers on um, on salt though works fine, so we could probably do some really cool stuff with that. Then we have the blue marbling. 
which you can see a little bit of here and there. I don't know if you can see anything on the back apart from down this corner. Now the black did quite a bit of, we'll call it leaching, because we all know what leeches drink. It did a little bit of leaching out in places. And the yellow splodges again, they're, well I guess you can see they're subtly yellow. They're not in your face yellow. So yeah, that's that one. Now the red one, over marbles. It looks like it's just an attempt. It's a bit more marbly on the back there. But again, it just looks like I've poorly attempted to dye dough. And again for YouTube, dye as in dyeing colours and not any other kind. Because it's going to be hard to find a different word for that, YouTube. And the blue does stand out enough. And I've gone with the gold acrylic markers on this. And they haven't really leached out. It looks like it's leached out a bit here, but it hasn't. That's just where I didn't go quite around the outside of the blue. That's a bit of blue coming over this way. And I made that a sort of a weird robot face. <laughs> so mixed successes there, but definitely things that we can take away. Now this piece, that was blue to start with. It is not blue. So went over that and painted it with food dye, which worked absolutely fine. This down here was meant to be green. It's barely anything. In fact, it's come out whiter than it is to start out. So we went over that with a bit of green marker. The red just took fine. The yellow, you can see a little bit of it under there. But then I went over with a little bit of marker and just dragged the, uh, the sun rays out a little bit. Same for these. These were meant to be green. They're not very green. So I roughly greened them up a touch. So it looks more like a tree. So we've got a little landscape there, which does look quite nice. It's simple, but it's effective. Now, the flower has had the best result. This is where I just mushed the last bit of blue, yellow and red marble together. And it has marbled better than any of the other pieces. You can even see a bit of yellow creeping through there. So yeah, that's come out quite well. And we know cocktail sticks, when they're baked in the clay, which in a future video that I've been recording today, I did not know, no, I actually recorded it while this was baking. I did not know at the point of doing that, that these stick so well. So, <laughs> yeah, you'll see when that one eventually comes out. But that's quite effective, looks pretty cool. It's obviously a flower. Is this like a stamen, I think, they're stamen, with the little pollen bits on the end there. So that's come out pretty cool. And what I like the most is our sweet little teddy bear here. Now that was just using, that's where it's been most effective with the three colours. Well, two colours. Because I think this one, I think that was just a bit of white left actually, or just a bit of plain. So a bit of plain, a bit of red, a bit of blue, and they all are obvious as to what they are. And he's come out quite cute. He's a little bit mushed. His nose did fall off because I tried to put him together without using water. So his nose did fall off and this ear, I think, fell off. So I glued them back on with super glue. Um, that was before, obviously, uh, sealed it with the PVA glue. So nothing's going anywhere now. But yeah, he's quite sweet. Let's come all the way down here. Oh, look at him. What a little cutie. And he's cooked really well. There's no splits or ruptures or mini explosions going on. And he was put together not using water. I just squished him together. That's why some of these bits were going to come off because there was nothing actually trying to adhere it to itself. But that's the only way I could do it without encouraging rupture because then it'd be too wet. So that... 
is the end of that. Well, this has been a fun little experiment. I do recommend the salt though. It's fun to make and if you are new to sculpture and you don't want to splash out because a lot of clays that you can buy like air drying clay, um, obviously kiln clay costs a lot because you need to kiln for that as well. Um, silk clay, various air drying clays basically. Fimo's not too bad or like polymer clay. You can get some decent deals, but again, it's still, it's going to cost you more than a bit of flour and a bit of salt. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend it if you want to try getting into sculpting. It doesn't matter so much how it ends up after it's come out of the oven. It's just a good practicing medium, so you can try and sculpt things with it. Um... If you want to finish them off in the oven, finish them off in the oven, try to preserve your work. If not, just use it as an experimenting tool, as a practice tool before you invest in the more expensive clays. So that being said, thank you so much for stopping by and checking me and my channel out. I hope you've taken something from this, maybe some ideas, something to try, even if you just enjoyed seeing what happened when I tried. <laughs> Like if you like what you see, comment if you've got something to say, and subscribe if you really like what you see and you want to see more and know when it's coming. Thank you all again so, so much. Take care and see you in the next one.